This video is brought to you by Squarespace, the best way to make an amazing website. Hey guys, it's Max. Today we will find out if the new M1 MacBook Pros are finally an excellent tool for Premiere Pro video editing. In the past, I showed you guys how it is amazing in Final Cut Pro beating out crazy high-end systems, and then DaVinci Resolve also kind of caught up or close to that, and it's great, but those of you guys that use Premiere Pro, which is a lot of you, this was still not that great great. Um, there was a lot of inefficiencies, a lot of slowdowns, and it wasn't the hardware, it was software, but Premiere Pro recently launched the full version of the Premiere Pro 2021 for M1 MacBook Pros, and you guys have been asking, hey, is it now finally good enough? Can I go out and buy one of these machines, sell my other machine or upgrade, and will it perform well? So today we will find that out in a wide variety of codecs, both basic 4K, H.265. We'll look at the new Canon footage that is really difficult and has sucked on the M1 systems in Premiere Pro and has been excellent with Final Cut and DaVinci Resolve, as well as some tougher raw codecs as well. And I will let you guys know if it is time to jump on the Apple Silicon bandwagon. Now in front of me, I have a base MacBook Pro. For those of you guys that have an M1 MacBook Air or you're thinking of buying one, the performance will be fairly similar with that one as well. So we're talking about 1300 bucks, maybe 1100 bucks on sale. I'll have a link down in the video description. So I've already done a bunch of testing with the beta version of Premiere Pro. I have all the speeds previously. Let's go ahead and open up for the first time the new updated version and get to testing. Now the first test that I'm going to run is this 4K stabilization test. Now this is actually one that was fast on M1 MacBook Pros compared to even my Mac Pro which has 12 cores, cost 15 grand about. Now I'm wondering, is it the same? It could be the same. It was still way faster. Let's go ahead and get started. Let's start a timer. Look at that guys. It is flying. This used to crawl on Intel base max. And even with that speed, we're only using about 48% of the CPU and bam, we are done. That took 50 seconds to stabilize. Now that's still slow compared to the other programs, but before this update with the beta version for M1 Max, it took a minute and one second. And then of course, if you did this on a previous Intel MacBook Pro, I mean, this would be five minutes, five and a half minutes. So a huge improvement over even 16 inch high end Intel MacBooks. Uh, so very good. And next I want to do the same thing, but with a longer H.265 clip because they do work differently. Apple has hardware decoders for this. So let's see if Premiere is now using them. All right, we are done. And it didn't look like Premiere was using our CPU usage was still about the same. So that means they do have further optimizations that they could do. It's a bummer that they didn't do it, but our overall time was a minute and 59 seconds compared to two minutes and 29 seconds previously. So we still do have some improvements, but Premiere can do better than that. Now, the next thing I want to jump to is standard 4K H.264 8-bit footage. I know a lot of us are still shooting with that. So let's go ahead and hit the space bar, see how this plays. Okay, we got a little bit of starting at first. All right, and then now it's smoothed out. It looks like we do have a lot of graphics usage. CPU is only about 50, 60%. So that means we are now leaning more on the graphics. And now it looks like it's pretty much smooth. Uh, let me show you guys how you can actually check if you're getting perfect playback. On your keyboard, you wanna hit function, command, and then F12, and that brings up your console. And then you wanna go into the debug database view, type in dog, and you'll see enable dog ears. We're gonna click that for true. And then now when you hit play, you'll have this nice little readout that will tell you your actual frames per second. So it looks like we're playing back at 25-ish, 26. It's rendering a little bit higher, but playing a little bit lower than perfect uh, playback. So uh, we are not playing back perfectly at full resolution, 4K. Let's go to the half resolution here. And we're on a small screen here. So you don't really need that unless you're connecting to an external 4K display that's taking up the whole screen. And now it looks like our CPU usage is way down. Graphics is down from almost 100 to about 5960. And we're playing back perfectly. And now let's go ahead and export this and we'll get a render test. I am using hardware encoding. 
Let's bring it to Adobe Media Encoder and let's hit start. We're gonna render using Metal, of course, with Apple's optimization. And while I wait for this to render, let me give a shout out to the sponsor of this video, Squarespace. If you've been looking for a website, Squarespace is seriously the best way to go. You can make a great looking website like we did with literally no web making experience. As long as you can attach files to emails and drag and drop things, you can make an e-commerce website, a blog, portfolio, or anything else, you just choose from one of their great templates and then customize blocks of text and images. It's incredibly simple, it's affordable, and our websites have been running for years now, bringing in lots of traffic thanks to its built-in SEO tools. Go ahead and start your free two-week trial with no credit card required by going to squarespace.com slash maxyuriev or by using that link down below. And when you're ready to launch, you will save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. So it looks like at this point, uh, we are roughly half maybe a little bit more. We've had five minutes elapsed. It says we have four minutes remaining. That brings us to right about nine minutes and 10 seconds. And if we look at the top bar here, we see that the CPU is only being used 25%. The graphics is what's limiting us. Now, if you guys saw these tests previously in DaVinci Resolve or Final Cut, they were way faster using the same hardware. And what this tells me is that Premiere Pro, even though they went out and they touted that, hey, it's way faster, it's really not that much more faster. There's so many different things that Apple showed off to developers that they could do to make this much quicker, just like Final Cut is. Apple's trying to teach people how to do this, but it looks like Premiere Pro hasn't used a lot of those techniques. Now, the final time, as you guys see, it's very consistent here. Uh, usually Premiere Pro after a few minutes, this estimated time is super consistent. So it looks like it's about nine minutes and 10 seconds, whereas previously we were at nine minutes and 27 seconds. So just a tiny bit faster. Now, that is better than the non-beta Premiere Pro. That was around 12, 13 minutes. Or if this was an Intel-based Mac, that would be about 18 minutes. So yes, it's a lot faster than that. But at this point, you can't just replace your 16-inch MacBook Pro with a dedicated graphics card with this if you're using Premiere Pro. Now, if you use Final Cut DaVinci Resolve, yeah, this is about three times faster using those programs. So Premiere, Adobe, Come on guys, you guys could do better. Now I still have hope for other codecs. Of course, that is just one. Maybe they just left that alone, didn't do much. So here we're playing back H.265. And if we look at it, this is playing back really smoothly. We have full 4K resolution, not half, and it is playing it back perfectly. All right. Maybe we're gonna have some good news with H.265. This is just 8-bit. We'll also test the Canon R5 and R6 footage, maybe even the R3. Maybe they finally fixed that. So let's go ahead and start this out. Once again, using hardware encoding. Playback was great with effects, but let's see how long this takes to render. We're gonna go ahead and hit start. All right, all right, that is really good news right there. As we can see, GPUs at 100 uh, still, still our limitation here. I guess the M1X with better graphics is gonna be good for Premiere a lot better. CPUs hovering about the same, but our performance here is looking really nice. Previously, it took 14 minutes and 46 seconds for this five minute project. Go ahead and take a guess how long it took this time around. Comment down below. I'll just say I'm happy. Could be better, but I'm happy. All right, hopefully you guys commented. It took seven minutes and 19 seconds, more than twice as fast. So previously, H.265 was quite a bit slower than H.264. Now it is faster. So that is definitely a good improvement. And this is the future. So if you're using Premiere with an M1, definitely switch to exporting to H.265 now. Now what about 10-bit H.265 footage? Those of you guys with Fujis, uh, some of the Panasonics, or if you're shooting Sony with 420, that codec. Um, let's go ahead and see how it plays back. Look at that full 4K overkill here with effects, perfect 24 frames per second. Surprisingly, our GPU is not maxed out. It's actually doing a little bit better with multiple LUTs applied here. So very good, very good news. Now, one issue with this is that we don't have hardware encoding for it. It took really, really long, at least with the previous beta version for M1. Let's go ahead and export this and see if we have a fix. Let's toggle to hardware encoding. All right, so it says for these current settings, which is uh, SDR 10-bit, there are no hardware encodings. Of course, you could go down to 8-bit, get worse um, color, but 
Well, let's go ahead and export it the exact same way as we did before. And it looks like, unfortunately, we are still slugging along. So that took 18 minutes and 37 seconds, about 10 seconds faster than before for this very short project. It's still extremely slow. I do not recommend exporting this way unless you need the to use HDR. Uh, for that case, leave it overnight for your project, but still much slower than it could be. And now let's make this a little more difficult. This is red raw footage. 4.5K, just like I had before since I tested it. Let's see if a 13 inch cheap laptop can edit this or how much better it can. So it looks like right now, full resolution, we're playing back at about 13 frames per second. So you guys could see that stuttering, definitely not good. That's pretty much the same that it was before this new update, the official release for the M1. Let's check out at half resolution. All right, here, Okay, a lot smoother, but is that perfect? Eh, about 20, 21 frames per second. Previously, we got about 18 at half resolution, so just slightly better, but not really. And then we can drop down to a quarter here. Perfect playback. We have a little bit of graphics overhead. Um, and surprisingly, on such a small screen, it doesn't look that bad, but if you're going out to anything larger, it's gonna look pretty terrible. Let's go ahead and export this project, see what we get. And it looks like we have the same 15 minutes like we did before for a five minute project. Now here, the CPU is being used much more, and then the graphics, that was maxed out. So really, with the metal decoding for red footage, we're just limited by the graphics. So once again, if you're somebody that works with this kind of footage, you still want something with a dedicated graphics card that has more raw performance, or wait for the M1X. And now for Canon raw footage, this is from the C200, but you also have the C70 and other cameras. 4K 60 here at half resolution, and it looks pretty dang smooth, although we're only playing back about 35 frames per second with two LUTs applied, so that means you could do 24 FPS, 30 FPS, half res, it looks great. Now as far as performance, I think this is about the same uh, as we had previous to this native release. So I know there's a big fuss made about native, uh, but the beta version was decent before, um, and it looks like it's not really much better. We'll go ahead and export it. One thing I wanna know is, if we take a look at it, the CPU is what's being maxed out. It's a 77, bam, just hit 100 and it stays there. Not the graphics, so we've kind of flipped here compared to the red raw. Let's go ahead and export this. And I don't know what happened, but it actually got slower. 56 minutes with the new native version compared to 50 with the beta. Now, of course, this is 4K 60 raw. We're using Cinema 4K. You guys can see it's wider here, so there's no hardware acceleration. Unfortunately, Premiere still doesn't allow it, even though you do get that with DaVinci Resolve and Final Cut Pro, which means it takes much longer. But I guess on the positive end, for a really cheap base MacBook, eight gigs with half res, you can actually edit it. So compared to a couple years ago, you'd need a $4,000 16 inch or 15 inch back then MacBook Pro spec out and still wouldn't be great. Now you could do it here, but be ready to wait a long time when it comes to time to export. And now finally, let's close this down. Let's take a look at Canon R5 footage. Previously, this would stutter and then it would play back at not even one frame per second, which is weird because the M1s are the only ones that have a chip that could actually decode this. And in Final Cut, it played back perfectly smooth, whereas on even a $15,000 Mac Pro or custom PCs that are five grand, it is very difficult, it's choppy, you have to transcode it. So let's see if Adobe finally fixed this. It's been, what, nine months since this machine came out. Uh, we have full playback right here. This is 30 frames per second. Okay. So, oh, oh, no, no, <laughs> you guys saw that. It was playing smooth for a few seconds. And now look at this, not even one frame per second. Oh gosh, that's disappointing. Adobe, how can you do that? How can you say, finally, we have the native version released, it's fast. <sighs> Day one, Final Cut plays back without a dropped frame, perfectly smooth. DaVinci Resolve has it working. Oh my goodness. Okay, ah, not good, not good at all. Well, 
Yeah, I don't even know what to say. <laughs> Let's go ahead and export it. And just like I expected, it's basically the same, just five seconds faster, so nothing has changed. So what is my final verdict? Is it time to buy an M1 Mac for Premiere Pro? No, not really. Now, since they just released this version, the fully native version, how much more optimization are they gonna do? How much better is it gonna get? I'm not too optimistic. You look at DaVinci Resolve, they could have released the official version two months after this machine came out seven months ago, and it would have been much better than Premiere. And they're still in beta, they're still tweaking it and making it better, and it's running way better than this is. Now, um, I guess if you use Premiere Pro and you wanna keep using it, I would wait for the M1X version. That means you're paying a lot more money to get performance that's still probably gonna be worse if Premiere doesn't change anything uh, or if Adobe doesn't change anything, but you're gonna need extra hardware because the software isn't as efficient, whereas with other software, it's way better. So this is a bummer. I wish they kept it in Premiere. I wish they are using the chips that are built in to make everything three times faster, 10 times faster with some of these tests, smoothness way better and perfect, but they're not, and yeah. In this case, if you have an older Mac, you have a dedicated graphic chip, it's working okay. I probably would still wait unless you have to buy a Mac right now, and then maybe it would work, but don't expect amazing performance. So thank you guys for watching. Once again, shout out to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. They've sponsored us for a long time. Great website, great support, very easy to use. Go and check them out with the link below, this Macs, and I'll see you in the next video.